OK, so as you all know, next week is midterm week, so we don't have class. Week 10, you guys are still recovering from the midterms, so we're going to watch a movie. Uh, we're going to watch Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? directed by the Cohen brothers. It is a very loose adaptation of the Odyssey. Uh, so that connects with what we've been talking about. Uh, the movie is the length of the movie is just around uh, our class time. So we won't have time to talk a lot uh, during week 10. And so that's why I have passed out the handout this week. And I'm now going to introduce what we're going to be doing on week 11 and week 12. Uh, hi, Lian Tong Xue. So week 11, we're going to be reading the Lost Books of the Odyssey. This is a short story collection, and every short story is related to the Iliad or the Odyssey. Um, and we're going to read four short stories. Three of them are very short. The fourth one is slightly longer, but I think it's a high quality story that is worth spending a little more time on reading. The author, Zachary Mason, is a software engineer, Ranti uh, Gongchenshi. And apparently one day he went to read the Iliad and the Odyssey and he became fascinated. So when we read the stories, you often get a sense that uh, it's not a straightforward story. He's kind of like taking the elements of epic poetry, Greek epic poetry, and sort of combining them and mixing them and reordering them to create uh, these very special and fantastical short stories. Uh, this will be the only thing we read this semester that was originally written in contemporary American English. It's not a translation. Uh, now, in some ways that makes it easier, but in other ways it might make it harder also. When we read a translation, the translator is limited by two things, the original and the resources of the uh, newer language. So the translator has to translate within the boundaries of both ancient Greek and English. But for Zachary Mason, who's writing in English, he doesn't have to care about the original Greek. So he has a wider range of linguistic resources to express his ideas. In other words, some of his words and ideas might be more detailed, more specific, um, might even be more abstract. But we can talk about that during week 11. Uh, now, week 12, we're going to be reading uh, two, I think, two stories from the Metamorphoses by Ovid. This is not the Metamorphosis by Kafka. So, like, uh, don't read the wrong thing. Ovid was a Roman poet. And so he uses Latin, Latin Yu. Again, we're still going to be reading an English translation. Um, the Metamorphoses is a collection of ancient Greek and Roman myths. And by myths, I mean uh, legends and stories that are related to the interaction between gods and humans. So every story, uh, there is some god fucking around with some human, basically. Uh, and so we will get to see why, for example, this week, uh, one of the questions was, why is Telemachus afraid that Odysseus might be a god? We will see why people should be afraid of the gods, even if the gods are not angry at them. Um, it's written as poetry, and it's divided into, I think it was 12 books, but even though it's 12 books, each book has more than one story. Uh, so we're going to be reading, I think, two or three stories. Um, even in this version, which is a textbook version, 
uh, like the beginning of each story is given in square brackets. So if you look at the first page of the Metamorphoses, this is page 1053. It says from book 10 and then in brackets, Zongguahao, Pygmalion. So the name of this story is Pygmalion. So like in book 10, there's more than one story and the name of this story is Pygmalion. But even within the story of Pygmalion, there's more than one story. It's like a, a circle within a circle within a circle. And that's also part of the design of this poem to show that uh, when the gods interact with humans, it's not separate. Everything is connected either through history or through family or through like national identity. Everything is connected and influences the next thing. Um, now, this kind of thing could only have been written by a later poet in the Roman era and not by an earlier poet in the Greek era, because when you're talking about legends and myths, it takes time to develop. It takes time to become a set of stories. Uh, and so in Chinese, we would call him Ji Da Chenzhe, right? He waits for everything to settle down and then he writes it all down for us. One thing we should pay attention to when we read the Metamorphoses is that, again, this is a book by a Roman, not by a Greek. When the Romans uh, discovered Greek culture, they took the Greek gods, but they changed many of their names. So, for example, in Greece, uh, the, the most powerful god is called Zeus. But when the Romans came, they changed his name to Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter is also the name of the biggest planet in the solar system, Mushing. Uh, and the Greek name of the goddess of beauty, Aphrodite, was changed by the Romans into Venus, which also happens to be the name of the second planet in the solar system, Jingxing. Uh, so um, if you're confused about the changed names, you can look at the mythology book. Uh, there is a chapter in the book on the Roman gods, and the book will tell you the new names of some of the gods. Some of the gods, the names did not change. For example, the god of the sun, Apollo, is also still called Apollo. Um, yeah, so when you read, and if you get confused by the name of the god, uh, you can look into the mythology book to see if it's a Roman name instead of a Greek name. So that's what we're doing on week 12. We're going to be reading uh, two or three stories from the Metamorphoses. Uh, week 12, I will also introduce the next unit on Oedipus Tyrannos and pass out the new handout. I still have not received the latest translation of Oedipus. Um, I I'll see if I can like get the book and create the handout before week 12. Um, if not, I might wait to pass out the handout until week 13 and the first week you would have to read online. Is that OK? Would you would you be OK if you had to read it, uh, the PDF and you didn't have a paper copy? Some of you are hesitating. OK, OK, fine. So it, uh, if I don't get the new handout before week 12, I'll create the I'll, I'll create the paper version of the um, older translation and we will all suffer through the translation together. OK, so that's what we're going to be doing in the next few weeks. Questions? OK, now after this period, as soon as the bell rings, you can begin the midterm exam for this course. And the midterm exam will go all the way to next Monday midnight. It is a take home online open book exam. So let's go through the rules together to make, to make sure you understand the rules. First, uh, the exam has a deadline, but no timer. So you can log into Moodle 
and you can leave Moodle open for seven days and it's fine. There, you don't have to finish the exam within however many hours. You can use the entire week. You can submit more than one answer and I will only record the highest grade. So if you finish your answer and you hit submit and then you like go to get a snack or something and you're eating your snack and you suddenly remember you forgot to say something, you can go back, start a new answer and finish what you were going to say. Uh, and I will only give you the highest score. You have to use English. It doesn't have to be perfect English. Uh, I won't give you a score based on your English unless I can't understand what you're saying. Uh, yeah, you have to use English. Bo uh, the exam is open book, which means that you can use any resource, the library, go online, you can ask me questions, but you cannot talk to anybody except for me. You can only talk to me about this exam. Um, I encourage you to ask me questions. I so far I have never refused to answer a question. Yeah, so if you have questions, go ahead and email me using the email at the top of the Moodle page. Uh, this email. If you have questions, email me. Next. Uh, in your answer, you must give specific evidence from the assigned readings. The assigned readings is the handouts. So when you answer the question, you can't just give the answer. You also have to say based on this part of the handout. That's why I'm giving this answer. Uh, and for each piece of evidence, please give me the page number and or the line number something to help me locate exactly where what you're talking about um, this semester uh only the lost books of the odyssey and the bible are in prose san wen ti everything else is in poetry uh verse ring one so everything else has a line number uh and so like after if you give me your idea and then you say based on this in the handout and then in parentheses, Guaha, give me the page number or the line number. Now it's open book, so you can look at other resources and information online. But if you do, first of all, I don't recommend it. The exam is designed so that you can answer the questions without going online or looking at other information. But if you do look at other information, please tell me. First of all, tell me where you got the information, but also tell me which parts are from which source. So it's not. I hope that you don't just give me a list of sources at the end of your answer. I hope that you can give the evidence in the same way that you do for the assigned reading. You give your idea. You state uh, the evidence from somewhere else, and then in parentheses, Gua Hao, you give me the source of your information. So each source is matched to each piece of information. Yi Yi Pei Dui. If you use outside information and you don't tell me where you got it, that's called plagiarism, Cao Xi. And uh, plagiarism. As I say here, includes even the smallest things. You could be copying the introduction to someone else's essay. You could be copying the summary of the story. It's all plagiarism. You can't do any of this. Uh, this includes things in Chinese. If you find a Chinese source and you translate it into English, and I can trace the source that you copied from. That is also plagiarism. It doesn't have to be the exact same language. If it's a specific idea or a specific set of ideas, and I can tell that you took it from somewhere else, you should give me a source. If you don't give me a source, that is plagiarism. And if you plagiarize, 
you will get a zero on the exam. This exam is worth 40% of your final grade. So if you plagiarize and I find out, you're probably not going to pass. There's really no reason to copy someone else's answer because you can copy and then give me the source. There's no reason not to give me the source of where you're finding your information from. Um, but the reason I don't recommend you look at other sources is precisely because even the smallest kind of copying can be plagiarism. So like imagine this, you're reading about the Odyssey and you find a website that gives a perfect summary of the story. Now, then you have to go and write your own answer. But when you try to write your own summary of the story, you can't think of anything better than what the other person has written. You may not even know that you're copying. Maybe what you write down just happens to be that kind of description that has stuck in your mind and left a deep impression. But even unintentional plagiarism is still plagiarism. So like if I were you and I really cared about getting everything right and perfect, I would first try to answer the question myself. And if there are things that I don't understand and I can't figure out, then I would later go online and see if someone else has an idea. Uh, that's a good way to make sure that you're not accidentally copying somebody else. Uh, and then finally, you don't have to write it directly in Moodle. You can write your answer somewhere else and then copy paste it into Moodle. That's fine. Do you have questions about the rules of this exam? OK, these are the same rules also for the final exam. Uh, I found a very cool article in Chinese about plagiarism. Uh, if you want to find out more about why I'm so strict about plagiarism, you can read this uh, website. Let's look at the midterm exam. Answer one of the following. You only have to answer one. In fact, if you answer more than one, I will only grade one. So like answering two questions will not give you a higher score. Answer one. The first question. Caroline Alexander, the first woman translator of the Iliad into English, believes that the Iliad is a pacifist or anti-violence poem. Do you agree? Why or why not? Uh, for this question, you must say you agree or you disagree. You cannot say it depends. You cannot say uh, yes here, but no there. You must choose the best answer for you. So here's the hint. The best answer will examine at least three significant plot points of the poem. So when you're trying to, to decide whether you think the Iliad is pacifist or not, you should try to examine at least three different parts of the poem, three different events that happen in the Iliad. Uh, then uh, like weigh whether these events add up to pacifism or no, which one makes more sense. Uh, and then you can write a clear answer supporting your position. This is how I'm going to grade this. If you don't give me at least three examples, you will not get a perfect score. Uh, I should also mention the score. Yes, so the score is. It's. OK, so if you submit. An answer in English. That is related to the question you will get 50%, 20 points out of 40. If you give specific evidence from the poem to support your answer, you will get 24 points, which is 60%. So you have to give evidence in order to get a passing grade. 
And then the more and better evidence you get, the higher your grade will be. 28 points, 70%, 32 points, 80%, 36 points, 90%. Uh, and the best answer will be uh, you examine all three, at least three plot points or events. And for each one, you explain why it supports or does not support pacifism. Uh, and then you give a clear answer to this question that will give you 40 points, 100%. Do you have questions about the first option? OK, the second question, therefore, will be about the Odyssey. Do you think Odysseus is a good leader in the Odyssey? Why or why not? Again, you must answer either yes or no. You cannot say it depends. You cannot say I don't know. You cannot say good here, bad there. It has to be one answer, good or not good. Uh, and the grading is the same. You should examine at least three moments of leadership in the poem. Now, what does leadership mean? You can decide for yourself. Uh, is leadership like taking charge and giving orders? Is it protecting his men? Is it making hard decisions? Is it thinking about the long term goal? You can choose a standard that you think would best help you uh, give your answer. Uh, and using that standard, look at at least three parts of the poem, uh, discuss these parts in terms of whether Odysseus is being a good leader or not. Uh, and again, choose the best answer, yes or no, and then uh, explain your answer. Do you have questions about this one? Uh, by the way, I'm recording this, so if you forget or like you need to be reminded, you can go onto YouTube, uh, I guess tomorrow, uh, and watch this part again. So that's the exam. You have a little more than seven days. Now, I encourage you to try to do this as quickly as you can before you have to do your other midterm stuff for your other courses. Right, this goes until next Monday midnight. So the last day is also the first day of your midterm exam week. Uh, I personally would not enjoy having to take an exam during the day and then go home and take another exam at night. So I encourage you to take this exam uh, as soon as you can. And if you have any questions about this exam or the ideas or the poems or like about life in general, please email and ask me. Uh, and then like the answer space below is very big to encourage you to write as much as you need to. You do not have to fill up this space. This is an infinite box. It's 40 lines. If you keep going, it will keep on going down until I think like 10,000 lines or something. So don't worry about filling the space. It's simply to encourage you to write more. OK, that's the midterm. Do you have questions? So remember, there are more resources on Moodle than we have discussed in class, right? Let's go back and take a look. Uh, so you have the mythology book. You have all of the lecture parts of our course have been posted to YouTube. You have the Iliad and our discussion questions are also up there. You have the Odyssey. Um, I added a map to the beginning of the Odyssey file uh, that is part of the textbook, and I didn't include it before. Hang on, where is it? Right, so if you open the file now, the first thing you will see is a map.
it is a map if it will finish loading. Map, there we go. Uh, so this is a map of the world of the Odyssey. I have pointed out to you the two important places. This arrow points to Troy. And this arrow points to Ithaca. And all of the other stuff on the left hand page are the places where Odysseus had to go through because the sea god uh, pushed him there. So it's obvious that he does not take the straightforward route home. So if you're the kind of person who needs to have an awareness of the space, now you have a map. Uh, and then the next page begins with the top of the book nine summary. I also added that later. Uh, and then this is the beginning of the paper version of your handout. Right. Uh, and again, all of the lectures are recorded and uploaded to, to YouTube. OK, do you have questions about the exam? OK, uh, let's stop here to give you some time to think about the exam questions and you can begin thinking and planning. Uh, and if you have questions, you can come and ask me. So good luck on this. Good luck on whatever other exams you have next week. And I will see you to watch a movie in week 10. <laughs>